Hi, Ray Hayden here, and this video is gonna be about what I call the California option for the study of law. I also wanna answer a question that somebody had asked me under a previous video, in that because I do live in the state of Florida, and because I used open and distance learning study law in the state of California, I am limited to only being able to sit for the California bar exam, okay? That is the limit that's basically part of the package. Uh, but if you live in California, or you plan on moving to California, this is an excellent opportunity. That's all there is to it, and if you, Maybe you don't want to be an attorney by trade, but you want to take a, a program of study that will qualify you to be able to sit for the California bar exam. This is a very acceptable, affordable program or process, a way of doing it. Now, I'm not going to talk about the ABA programs or any other program that doesn't require us to sit for the first year law student's examination because that's the route that I went, that's the route that I know, and that's the route that I figure I can talk about with, with some level of expertise, right? Painfully earned expertise. Let's go into how we can qualify to get into these programs. Um, according to the California Legislative Information page here, and by the way, I will have links to all of these pages in the comments below. So check out the comments below uh, at any time before, during, or after this video, and look down there. I will have links to all of the pages that I'm going to use in this particular video, all right? Um, according to this, the short of it is we need an Associate of Arts degree or equivalent education. If you're good at CLEP tests, you can take the CLEP test to get your 60 you know, credits of uh, of uh, education that's required to become, you know, to enter into one of these alternative education programs. But basically, you don't need to go to another two years of college to get a bachelor's degree. If you have an associate of arts degree, associate of science degree, or maybe even an associate of applied science, but you also meet the other educational requirements, because there will be some for those, uh, then you can begin one of these programs, all right? You can check with the schools you might be interested in everything else, we'll talk about those later, and they will help you out in determining whether or not you meet the requirements, right? And, and by all means, ask the questions below because I know quite a bit about this too. Education is you know, my forte. I really am huge on education and affordable education and never borrowing a dime for education or never needing to borrow a dime for education, all right? Um, so with that, we talk about that in other videos. But let's go into what this alternative legal education is gonna require of us is this first year law student's examination. This is from the State Bar of California. Again, I'll have a link to this uh, page below. And uh, what we're looking at here is the first year law student's examination. Uh, painfully, every now and then, I hear somebody call it the baby bar. I cringe because this baby, oh, look at the baby. This baby is gonna eat you for breakfast, burp you for lunch, and forget about you by dinner like nobody's business. It's not gonna care. On average, okay, just to scare you up front, uh, it gave you the good news, right? You only need two year, you only need an associate of arts degree, associate of science degree to get into the program. But after you finish your first year, you're gonna have to pass this one day exam given in June and October, right? In Northern and Southern parts of California, you're gonna have to pass this thing and 80% of the people who take it on average are gonna fail. Every time, every year, year over year, on average, 80% of the people who take this exam are going to fail. It's a very tough exam to pass if you're not properly prepared for it. If you are properly prepared for it, it's still a tough test, but it's not as impossible uh, or painful as it otherwise could be. Now, to give you the example is me. I failed this thing five times. I figured out what I was doing wrong. As soon as I figured out what I was doing wrong, I passed, all right? So my sixth attempt, I passed, went right back into school at that point, finished my second, third, and fourth year, and, and earned my Juris Doctorate degree. All right, so now we know the good news is we can start with just two years of college, right? But we, no matter who we are and how much education we have, I have a, a master's degree, we all have to pass this first year law student's examination when we go this alternative method. It's a very tough exam with, it's a very difficult exam with its 80% failure rate on average, right? And anybody can pass and fail this thing. It, it takes no prisoners, all right? So now that we know this stuff, let's go into the process. From the admissions page, again, I'll have the uh, link below um, to all these pages. Uh, what I want to do is I want to click on the requirements. Now, we already know to get into the program, right? So now this is to get into an alternative program. This part of the video is going to talk about admission to the state of California to practice law by passing the bar exam. So this is the process of what we need to do to qualify to sit for the California bar exam. So let's go through it. We're going to look at the requirements. So we're going to open up this page here. It's going to say education. Um, you know, so I was on the admissions page, right? I clicked on requirements. And then from that, I'm gonna click on the education page and let's see what we have. All right, now this is gonna be the legal education that we need, right? 
And down here it says types of law schools. Let me scroll that up a little bit so you can see that. It's gonna say law schools, types of law schools. We're looking for the alternative legal method, not ABA programs or anything else. We're looking for things that are gonna make us sit for this first year uh, uh, bar, the first year law students examination, all right? So with that, if I click on the education and I go down and click on types of law schools, we're gonna come over to this page here. Now there's different types. There's the ABA schools and the ones that are approved by the State uh, Bar Committee of Bar Examiners. We're not gonna talk about those at all because those would uh, allow you to skip having to sit for the first year law student's examination probably, okay? I say that because there are some students that end up, they go to a school where they don't normally have to sit for the first year law student's examination. However, there are situations where California or your law school will say, you know what? Before you can continue, we are gonna require you to pass that first year law student's examination. Maybe your GPA is too low, maybe something happened, usually it's your GPA, uh, but they're gonna force you to go sit through that first year law student's examination before you can continue as well. And you know, I have a website dedicated to helping people understand what they need to know to pass that exam, all right? Um, so let's go back into education here and uh, look at the law schools. And I'm gonna talk about the unaccredited law school. Now, when I click on this, if you look over here, you see the scroll bar and I can scroll up and down. I'm gonna click on this, but I'm gonna use the back button because this is the kind of situation in the website where they programmed it to where I click on this, it basically jumps down the page and I'm gonna hit the back button to get back up here a couple of times. You'll see, it'll make sense in a second. So let's look at the unaccredited law schools, all right? And you see the scroll bar jumped way down here um, and that's what we're talking about. There's three types of these unaccredited law schools. Now, one is an unaccredited correspondence school, uh, one is a distance learning law school and the other one's a fixed base law school. Let's start from the bottom and work our ways up. Uh, the fixed base law school is going to require a brick and mortar law education. The student has to show up like an ABA accredited school or any other uh, authorized school like that. You show up, you sit in class at a designated place and time and you go through your law study program. It's just like any other traditional, you know, old school law school, right? And so that's the way that works. They traditionally, you must go sit in class and be in a classroom that way. Now, some people learn best that way, all right? And that's what I wanna talk about here as part of this process as well. Each of us learns best in our own way. It is up for us to identify what way that is so that we can choose the right school and the right kind of program for us. The next type um, that's a little bit more freeing is we can be anywhere in the country. So if you're here, you have to live relatively close to that school, right? Let's, as a matter of fact, let's look at them. There's a couple of them down here. Uh, let me see, two, four, six, seven. So that you have to live either in Indio, Los Angeles, Riverside, uh, Cerritos, uh, San Diego, Bakersfield, or Orange, uh, I guess that's the city of Orange in California there, right? Uh, I'm thinking Orange County for some reason. But anyways, you have to live relatively close within driving distance of these schools reasonably in order to go ahead and attend these schools. Or you have to temporarily move there to, in order to go there, right? Um, in that area. That's just the way that is because it's a brick and mortar kind of school, right? For the distance learning ones, we can live anywhere. We can live anywhere in the United States and go to these now. These ones here are gonna have basically, they try to mimic the idea of a brick and mortar school, meaning they're gonna have classes where all the students show up at the same time from a distance, right? Meaning you're getting on a video conference, you're getting on a chat conference, some kind of a conference thing, and you're all there at the same time communicating with your instructor at the same time, all right? Through technological means, you're gonna get your legal education that way. Then we have the kind of program that I use, and it's an unaccredited correspondence program. Basically, when I started this program, I actually had to print out my assignments, put them in, a, you know, put them in an envelope, take them down to the mailbox, put them in the mail, correspondence, old school correspondence, right? By the time I finished school, they had evolved and, and migrated and everything, and rather than going to the post office, I went to the school's website and submitted my assignments through their proprietary website, and then they got the assignment that way, all right? So that was a great uh, bonus and benefit and everything. And my school ended up being more like my online degree from uh, Florida State University than a go to the post office and mail something in and wait, right? Because they got the thing instantaneously, saves a lot of time, energy, aggravation, and frustration. And it was a great uh, progression for the school and correspondence law school programs in general, right? So I think it was a fantastic evolutionary process. But um, for a fixed base school, you have to go there brick and mortar, live, face to face, that kind of thing. Distance learning, live, face to face, but you can be anywhere in the world, all right? And then unaccredited correspondence, we did have some live face to face stuff, uh, video chats, uh, text chats, and things like that, but they were optional. 
The primary thing was the correspondence aspect of it, so I agree with the classification that way, but the program opera operated much like the more asynchronous classes that I had from Florida State and from Amberton University out in Texas, uh, where I got my master's degree, all right? So uh, if you need a more structured uh, kind of program, I'd recommend a fixed-based facility. If you can, if you need kind of like the camaraderie of your fellow classmates and everything like that, communicating with each other in a live environment, but you're at a distance, but you kind of need a, a little more structure, then I would say distance learning is probably your uh, best way to go about it. And if you are a uh, individually uh, motivated, dedicated, and uh, determined person, you know, you get the motivation, dedication, and determination to get the job done, and you're very much a self-starter, then I would highly recommend the unaccredited correspondence program because this is how uh, I was able to get the job done for me, all right? Because I can operate in that environment very well. Uh, but so we should investigate these types of programs, look at what matches our finances and our time and, and everything for our, our capabilities. And if we want to go that route, you know, knowing that we're all going to have to sit for the uh, first year law students examination, then we can go ahead and make a uh, informed decision on which kind of program we would like to try to uh, investigate. All right. So um, that is the California uh, bar, uh, the California option for the study of law. And that's the process and going through it. If um, you have any questions or anything, questions, comments or anything, make a comment below. Let me know you came by to say hi. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I will be making more videos along this line, and when I pass the California bar exam, I will absolutely positively know how and why I passed it, and I will be sharing that information with everybody the same way I, I shared my information from my successfully passing the first year law students examination as well, all right? So with that, until I catch you in the next uh, video, take care and be well.